Yeah, in 2012 I met uh, the owner Anthony Lanier at the British Junior Open and we, we uh, one night we got in a chat at a bar of a very nice hotel in Sheffield and he was telling me about his plans uh, in Washington DC that he, he had a plan to build uh, a squash club and he was really excited about it and um, so we got in that chat and actually many years later um, now I'm working for him Actually, I found this, um, this email that he sent me after our chat at the hotel that he sent me a drawing about what his plan was, and that was amazing. So once I finished my job as the head coach of the Netherlands, and looking for a job, uh, let's say for a new job, because Netherlands' uh, job finished due uh, lack of uh, f uh, funding, uh, then Scotch of Fire came in the picture, and uh, actually that was a very quick uh, uh, thing going on that it was very easy and they, they, they uh, actually apply me yeah and the facility is, is fantastic is I think uh, definitely one of the most maybe the most beautiful club that I ever been in, in, in not only in the United States all over the world um, it's, it's a very uh, special model business wise because we, we, do, we are not a members club we actually um, play and pay kind of club, so that means every morning we have to be a bit stressed if people are going to come in. So it's, uh, we don't. Have, so that's why we, we are so dynamic and so um, proactive because we need clients to come in every day again. It's not that we can uh, rely on a membership that we get through the year. So it's it's a different kind of uh, business model. Uh, in sense of the the community that we build here, it's like very, um, very a lot of variation there because we have uh, women, uh, men. It's uh, almost equal, I would say. It's like uh, we have um, young, old. We have a great, great junior academy that we created the last couple of years. Uh, we have junior stars clinics for uh, for the very, very small kids. Actually, we, we actually deliver all uh, range of uh, squash. Yeah. Since many years, I am tutoring uh, coaches all over the world uh, as part of the coaching committee, obviously. Um, I think my, my passion is to teach, and uh, my passion is not only to teach players, but also to teach uh, coaches. Because I think the sport can only survive, it's definitely in, in the smaller countries. When there's a, a good, good, uh, solid coaching staff going, like the number of coaches should be high, then you can create a game, kind of lift it to a higher level, uh, and that will mean that you you get better players in each country, and they will be a role model for those who want to start playing squash. And you definitely see it in the United States. It's like when I came from Europe to the U.S., it was a complete uh, culture squash shock, I would say because it's a complete different uh, approach. Uh, everything, is, everything is meant to be uh, towards college life. Yeah? College is very important. So kids train in young age to have a chance to get to a college team. And that, I mean, that, that system is fantastic. Obviously there are very, very, f a lot of foreign coaches. Yeah? So it's, it's a lot of coaches coming from abroad and, and most of the time, there are players who just finish their career and then they, they get a coaching job in, in the States. I would say, I, I hope that, that we can lift the level of the coaching quality in the, in the US because that, that would make the country even stronger. I, I, I'm not saying that there are not good coaches in the US. I, th I think there are a huge amount of good coaches, but I think we can increase that number and uh, those who finish their, let's say, their playing career, we should actually give them immediately, let's say, some kind of education because being a player or a coach, that's two different worlds. And it's about, you need to know how to deliver the information and, and, and that, that's not that easy. Not all people can do that. Yeah, the Arlen Spectre Center is obviously, uh, was a huge uh, positive uh, thing happening in the US because it's, it puts squash a bit more uh, serious in, in the sports uh, arena in the US because if you can build such a fantastic facility then that means that squash has a, a base on a national uh, level where, where players can develop, where you can uh, get the best players of the country together in one facility. 
And why is scorching fire so important? Because scorching fire plays a significant role in, in the DC area. Because squash in the DC area, you cannot compare it yet with the squash in uh, New York, uh, Philly uh, area or Boston. Uh, here, this is still a growing uh, thing, squash in this area. So we need to squash and fire, put uh, something on the map. They say, look, this is what you can do in a big city like uh, Washington DC. And that all that surrounding, all the, let's say, uh, towns around uh, Washington, uh, they should also try to increase the number of squash cores. And then you can, after many years, you can compete level-wise with, let's say, the other uh, clubs like in New York and uh, Philadelphia. During COVID, uh, we didn't travel, so we, we didn't have all, let's say, coaching uh, conferences and we didn't have our meetings with uh, the coaching staff uh, from WSF. So we, did, we lost all that a bit. So I think this year everything will come back. Uh, we start traveling again. There's, some, there's a plan uh, for level three in uh, Colombia. Uh, this year so things are happening again and that's where we as let's say the tutors can also develop each other by uh, working together in, during a week and say okay how do you do this how, how, how did that happen did, did you see that type of play how can you can we teach the kids this how can we how can we develop players to that level so now by what WSF and uh, European Sports Federation is developing in Europe uh, so now there are, there's, there's more, uh, more happening in terms of coach education. Uh, so I would say, yeah, start as soon as you can, do a level one, because that will make you a happier coach, that will also make you a better coach. And once you're really into the coaching job, then you want to improve. You want to say, okay, now I'm working with these beginners in my club, but I want to I wanna, uh, also be able to coach the better players. And the, the, the big, big mistake that people make is that uh, people think that you have to be a fantastic, skillful player to be a good coach. That's not true. You can be a limited player and still you can be a fantastic coach. You just need to know how to set up that situation. You need to know how to um, uh, guide a player through uh, the pathway of development.